Good morning, Internet. I am Matt Buyak, and in this video, we'll take a look at the 13th problem from the Project Euler Problem Archive. So in the last video, I promised you a little bit more analysis on that problem, problem number 12. Uh, and I just wanted to let you know I haven't forgotten. That video is still in the works, uh, but if that's something that interests you, you'll have to wait just a little bit longer for that. Uh, so in the meantime, let's take a look at problem number 13. So this problem asks us to find the first 10 digits of the sum of 150 digit numbers. Uh, and you can see them listed here. Uh, and at first glance, it seems like this might be entirely outside the realm of our capabilities. The, the native integral types uh, in C and C++ just aren't large enough to, uh, to store a 50-digit number. Um, but it turns out that with some amount of cleverness, uh, we can still find our way to a solution. So let's get into that. As always, we'll start by creating our problem directory. And we'll open our analysis file. Um, so uh, as I just said, we are trying to find, you know, uh, some sum s, which is going to be, uh, uh, you know, the sum of our, our uh, large 50-digit numbers, you know, x0 plus x1 plus x2, etc. And we can't store uh, the entirety of one of these numbers, um, at least not in a form where we're able to actually perform arithmetic operations on it. Uh, we could obviously store it as a string or some such, but that wouldn't be useful for our purposes. Um, so if we think about how we might approximate one of these numbers in a way that we can store it, um, maybe the first thing that comes to mind is we could just uh, uh, drop the, the rightmost 35 digits. Um, that is just set them to zero. Um, and so th this is what uh, that looks like. You might have some, you know, uh, approximation of, of a value of x, call it little x, um, and that's going to be of the form, you know, c times 10 to the 35th for some uh, 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 value of c, and that's going to be less than or equal to um, uh, large x. Um, uh, note that uh, x is the largest such natural number. Um, and so uh, we might first observe that uh, c is small enough that we can store it. Uh, because these are 50-digit numbers, that means that uh, you know, c is a 15-digit number. And so that means that we can uh, store C in a 64-bit um, integer. You'll, you'll recall that a 64-bit a integer has uh, uh, roughly 19 uh, decimal digits uh, thereabouts. And so we should be able to store um, the value of C. Um, uh, something else to consider um, is that... Uh, 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 you know, we have x uh, times, uh, or excuse me, c times 10 uh, to the 35th is less than or equal to x, uh, which is less than um, uh, you know, c plus 1 times 10 to the 35th. So uh, this not only gives us, you know, an approximation for uh, our capital X, we also have an upper bound on that value. Now, if we take our, uh, our expression here and we add that up over all of our numbers, um, you know, for, for uh, x0, x1, x2, et cetera, what we get is something of the form, um, you know, uh, uh, let's say, you know, let s equals, um, you know, x0 plus x1 plus x2, where, where these little x's are the approximations of of uh, you know, big X zero, big X one, big X two. Um, 
<clears throat> then what we get is uh, little s is less than or equal to um, um, you know, big S is, uh, is less than uh, S plus uh, 10 to the 37th. Um, and and the, this 37th just came from uh, uh, 10 to the 35th, which is the, the error on a, um, on a single value um, times 100. And so uh, that's just a 10 to the 37th like so. Um, and so this may be enough to, to give us our answer. And I say may um, because depending on the exact value of little s, uh, we may or may not be able to determine the first 10 digits uh, uh, correctly. And so uh, just as an example, let's um, you know, suppose S is equal to 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 1, 2, 3, 4, or, uh, uh, 6, 7, 8, 9, 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, um, uh, uh, 6, 7. Um, so that should be 17 digits, um, reasonable possible value for our result. Um, then then what, can we, what can we conclude from that? Well, it would be that um, uh, you know, this value is less than or equal to... Um, Oh, excuse me, uh, this value times 10 to the uh, 35th. Um, is, you know, less than or equal to uh, uh, big S is less than this same value plus uh, 10 to the 37th, so that. Now, in this case, you can see that no matter what the, the exact values of, of, of big X is, um, the first 10 digits are unchanged. And so we can, this is essentially a proof that we, uh, our, our approximation is good enough to find the first 10 digits in this case. But now let's suppose instead that um, that that these digits here are um, are all nines. So that's uh, uh, five nines, yeah. Um, and you'll see something a little bit different happens here. And so we have uh, this value is less than or equal to big S is less than. Um, this value plus 10 to the 37th, but then that gives us uh, this value here. And you'll notice that now the, the, uh, the first 10 digits are different depending on what the exact value of, of, uh, of S is. We can't be certain that the 10th digit is a one or the 10th digit is a zero. Um, now, fortunately, this will only happen if we have this big string of nines here. And so we're probably safe. Uh, spoiler alert, we are safe. Um, uh, so so uh, unless we have uh, this string of nines here, we uh, will be able to arrive at a solution. Okay, so let's get into solving the problem. First, we need to somehow get this giant pile of numbers into our program. And so uh, I don't know that I've talked about uh, grep and sed previously. These are command line utilities uh, that are, are very useful for this sort of thing. And so I'm going to show you some tricks with those um, real quick here. Let's start with a temporary file. We'll just call it temp.txt. And we will paste our pile of numbers. Okay, so um, the first thing I'm going to going to do is extract the uh, leftmost 10 digits from uh, each line here. And so uh, I can use grep to do that. Grep is a utility just for searching 
um, um, files and, and directories for, for a particular text, or text matching a particular pattern. And so here we're going to say grep-o, uh, zero, uh, zero to nine. And in a moment, I'll explain what I'm doing here. Um, sorry, I have one, two, three, four, five. Uh, one, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five. Okay, so uh, this dash O here is indicating that I want to match, um, uh, that the output I, I want is just the matching part. Um, otherwise, it would return the entire line for any line that, that matches. Um, and so this is saying I just want those 15 digits. And then this is just saying the first character is in the range 0 to 9, the second character is in the range 0 to 9, uh, etc. Oh, and, and we, want, um, we want that to start at the beginning of the line. So that's what this character indicates. And we'll feed in our temp.txt. Oh. oh, I see we're not in our, uh, let's go to our problem directory. Temp.txt, OK. All right, and so if we go over to our, uh, our, uh, our temp.txt, we can check the last one here. We have 535035, and you can see that that, um, that matches what we have here. So it seems like that's working as uh, expected. OK, so uh, there are a few more uh, uh, things that we would like to change about this. One is that we're going to need these to be um, comma separated. And we probably want to add the postfix uh, ULL to indicate that this is a uh, long, long unsigned value. And to do that, we're going to use the utility uh, sed. Um, now, sed. Uh, basically takes a, uh, a, a bunch of text as input and it does some operation on each line and for each line produces some output. Um, and uh, the, the format is you'll know, usually have a, you know, apostrophe, uh, two delimiters, and ending apostrophe. And then each of these uh, uh, represents a, you know, a section of the, oh, excuse me, there's, <laughs> uh, there should be three delimiters there. Um, uh, 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 and so the, the first section here represents the command that you're doing. And so we're, we're going to use S for search. It's basically a find and replace. Um, we're going to search for the uh, end of the line. That the dollar sign character indicates end of the line. And we're going to replace that with um, ULL comma. The last section uh, indicates a flag. We don't have any flags to apply, so that should be all we need. And you can see the result. So uh, this is almost what we need. There is just one final gotcha. Um, let's see if I can find an example. Uh, not. Oh yes, yes. This should be. Um, no, this should be. This should be fine. I was uh, thinking of something else. Okay, so uh, this should be what we need. We can write this to our uh, input dot h. Uh, one thing you'll note is that I. Uh, the reason that I use this, um, um, you know, temporary file temp dot text is that you can't have the same input and output of a, of a command like this. Um, and so I had to have this, this temporary file. Uh, one other thing I, I haven't mentioned is this pipe symbol. That just means take the output of one program and put it into the input of another program. OK, so let's uh, open our input.h. Still needs a little bit of cleanup. Uh, so we're going to say uh, uint uh, 64t input is equal to all of that stuff. We're going to need to include std int uh, dot h. And we'll need a terminating curly brace. OK. Uh, we don't need our temp.txt anymore, so we can uh, remove that. 
and now we can get to writing some code. Uh, and so what we're going to do is say um, uh, uint64t uh, sum equals zero, and then we'll just say for uint64t uh, x in uh, input sum uh, plus equals input or uh, x, and then uh, printf sum equals percent lu sum. And we need to include our uh, input dot h. OK. Um, so if we make, oh, I've, uh, I've used the wrong, uh, yeah, these should be quotes. And we can run that. All right, so um, you'll you'll notice that this is more than than ten digits. That's to be expected. Um, so our actual answer is going to be the section that I'm highlighting here. I believe that should be yes. That's ten digits. Um, and you'll notice that if we were to add a one here to this this seven, it has no effect on these digits. And so uh, uh, we, we can know that this is the uh, uh, correct answer. And we'll double check that by going to the archive here, scrolling quite a ways down. And here we have our matching answer. Uh, so that's it for this video, and in the next video, we will continue with problem number 14.